Okay, if you have any questions, if I say something you don't understand or I need to repeat something, please let me know. Okie dokie. Goats. Everyone in this room, I take it, loves goats. So I'm, a, I'm more of a sheep person, but I've, they've kind of taken up with me. I really enjoy goats, working on goats. Uh, there are 502 million goats worldwide. And I actually got this from a textbook that was 10 years old. So I'm sure that that number has really, really in, enlarged and improved. Whoops. Getting trigger happy here. Uh, only 2.8% of this 502 million are in North and Central America. So that's a ton of goats that are all over the world, just not in the United States. And Tennessee is second in terms of their goat population behind Texas. So there are a lot of goats here. Uh, goats are very diverse. We use them for meat, milk, their cashmere, their mohair, fiber, cheese, and, and skins for their leather, too. Um, and not only that, but a lot of people, a lot of my clients have five or ten acres and just will put a goat on five or ten acres just for weed control. Some people use them for pack use, and a big part of my clientele are pets. Uh, I thought I'd just kind of go over some different breeds with you guys. Uh, these are mostly the breeds that I see um, in our practice. Uh, the dairy breeds are Cyan's and Toggenbergs. I see some Nubians, Alpines, and my favorite are La Mancha. They have the most personality. Uh, here's a Nubian here. This is a La Mancha. They're the ones with very little to no ear. This is an Alpine here, and this is a Cyan. Uh, a lot of the meat breeds, most people have boar around here. They're showing their meat goats. Uh, I see more and more Kikos. Do, anybody, do people know what Kikos are? Anybody see Kikos? Uh, pygmies, Spanish meat goats, and my favorite to work on, the feigning goat. They're the easiest to handle. I'll go up to them and go, ha! Ah! And they fall over and I can give them their shots. And it, it's over and done. They didn't even know what happened. <laughs> So here's a boar goat here, here's a nice Kiko female, here's a pygmy, a Spanish meat goat, and they call them wooden leg or Tennessee feigning as well. Uh, your fiber breeds, cashmere, angora, and pygora. Pygora are pygmy angora mixes. And I actually did a C-section on one not too long ago. They're very interesting looking. Uh, these are angoras. They kind of look like Muppets, don't they? They don't even look real. This is a cashmere here, and Hari's cashmere look much better than this, my friend sitting over there. Um, and this is a pygora here. Goats are more browsers than grazers, and what I mean by that is they rather eat something that's about six inches off the ground than to, eat, to, than to buzz below like a sheep or a cow would. So they love vines and tree limbs and that sort of thing. And they have a, they're very social and they actually have a kind of a caste system like most of our livestock do. You've got your boss nanny or your boss weather. Uh, we've got those in, in our sheep flock too. Okay, some common diseases. Again, if there's something you don't understand, just please let me know. Some skin diseases that you guys will deal with. Have you, have you guys ever heard of ORF or sore mouth? You guys heard of that? Yes. Uh, the big fancy word is contagious eczema for that. It's actually a viral infection. Uh, most times you'll see abrasions at their mouth, the teeth, um, and even around their ears. Since it's a viral infection, there's not a magic drug to give them to fight a virus. But we do give them antibiotics to help with secondary bacterial infections because sometimes those papules and whatnot around their mouth, around their teeth, and around their ears will get very infected. The big thing to know about this is it's zoonotic, and that means that we can get it from them. Okay, so be, if you have a suspicious area around their mouth, you always call your vet and talk to your vet. I've got some pictures. I've got some pictures. And always know to wear gloves. I don't really see it so much in goats, but I see it in sheep quite often. Uh, but the big thing is the supportive care is kind of like any kind of pock virus. It will take it. It will run its course. So just kind of get them through it. And if it goes through one, it will probably go through all of them. Here's an example here. See how it's kind of abraded and kind of papule-like around the mouth there? And look at there. She's not wearing gloves. That's not smart, is it? <laughs> Uh, this is one around the teat, just very uh, abraded and very nasty looking. Okay. Other skin diseases, 
Dermatophytosis is a big fancy word for ringworm or club lamb fungus. Uh, again, it's a big problem in sheep, but we do see it in goats too. They have skin. Uh, it's a crusty, scaly skin when they, they kind of have a hair loss. Not to get it confused with lice, but you can't tell just by looking, oh, that's ringworm or oh, that it's not. So if you've got a suspicious area, it absolutely could be ringworm. The thing to remember with that, it's zoonotic, meaning that you can get it too. So some of your treatments, there's different topical antifungals. Some people use iodine. Uh, you can use lime sulfur dip too. Always with your grooming equipment, it's a good idea whether you have a fungus or not. When you go to a show, we do it with our livestock, is you clean your equipment when you get home. Because you may get some of these fungal spores on your grooming equipment if somebody borrowed it and you didn't even realize it and you can bring it home to your animals. So that's a real good idea to do that. You can just use a 1 to 10 bleach to clean your equipment. And always wear gloves if you suspect that. This is a picture of ringworm on a person's finger. I couldn't find one on a goat. Um, but, um, but if you ever get this, always call your doctor and your vet too. Okay, CLs. Anyone heard of Casey's lymphadenitis? It's a nasty, nasty disease. I saw a sheep this afternoon, I suspect, that has this. Um, it's a very chronic, contagious disease. It's a bacteria that causes it. And what happens is their lymph nodes will get really swollen around their head and their neck and kind of all over their body. Okay, I've got some pictures to show you. The bacteria, it enters in through small breaks in skin that sometimes we can't even see, and it travels throughout all their lymph nodes and become really enlarged. So what happens is they swell and they swell and they swell and they swell and eventually they'll rupture. When they rupture, all that goo and nasty that's in those lymph nodes and those glands contain that bacteria. So that's when it can travel to your other goats. Okay. Uh, incubation, meaning it takes about two to six months for it to develop throughout the body. And uh, we kind of die, I spelled diagnose wrong, but we can, we can diagnose that based off clinical signs, meaning what they look like, and we always culture that nasty stuff that's in there and that's secreted from those glands. And they can let us know that that's truly that, that um, disease. Treatment, we can give them antibiotics. There's not, a, the success is not really good for curing CL. That's the negative thing. There's different, all different types of treatments that you can do, but most times they'll always come back and it'll spread to your other goats. So the best thing to do is to either euthanize them or, or, to, or to sell them. If, uh, if, if you suspect that you might have one before it ruptures to culture, can you lance it? What you should do is, and what I usually do, if I suspect that once, see this animal right here, it hasn't ruptured yet, it's not contagious unless that pus gets out of the body. So what I do is I immediately quarantine, and they may have busted at one point, you didn't even realize it, okay? So I'll quarantine them, and I get a tiny, tiny needle and get a sample out and send it off to the state lab and keep them quarantined. And what, don't lance it in front of you. The rest of your animals are where those other animals can get to because that's what's so infected is that nasty stuff that comes out of there. So I wouldn't just lance it and hope for the best. Now, it may be just a simple abscess. Some of them can be, but if you suspect it, you ought to get your vet to come out and to, and to take a sample to the state lab. That's what you should do before you lance it, because once you do that, it's all over the place. Yes? One time we, we had a goat that had that, and we, we, we had bought the goat and brought it onto the farm, and so we wanted to take care of it. We took that goat to the vet. He lanced it on his you know, site right. and cauterized it. Yes. And that was two years ago, and it's not come back. Oh, that's so, good. That's so excellent. Far, that's, that's excellent. Been, Good, good, good. I don't know if it would be in every case. Right, right. And people use formaldehyde. There's all different treatments for it. And, you, and sometimes they don't come back. It may just been had a little break in the skin here and it went to that one lymph node. That's as far as it got. But typically, if you don't want it on your place, we tell them to get rid of them. Yeah, yeah. But, but no, you can cauterize and do things like that. Yes, sir? Can people get this? No. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> so. These are lymph nodes that are, this is, it around, this is actually lung on either side, and this is heart. Oh, excuse me, mediastinal. Yes, 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 that's correct. These are, this is lung, and this is part of the heart and part of the liver there. These are lymph nodes that are swollen inside. Sometimes they don't even get swollen on the outside. They're swollen all on the inside. 